Hey mech warriors, welcome to Bad Ben's Battle Mechs. I'm Bad Ben, and this is the second episode of my How to Build a Battletech Fortress series, and the final episode. Uh, yeah, here you can see my base with stuff that wasn't on it at the end of the last episode, and that's because I did a lot of stuff off camera. That's just how I do it. Sometimes I don't want to film myself, and I also got the kids involved, and we did all the weathering ourselves. It was really easy. We just took a bunch of uh, green, dark, dirty green wash, spread it at the tops, and streaked it down with some brushes, and then did the same with some black wash uh, near the tops. Uh, I also made like a whole liter worth of black wash that I poured all over the floor of the of the base can't see it here sorry but it just get, helped it make it look uh worn and dirty and you can see the battle scars the scratches and dots and so on uh from impacts previous battles and so on and you can also see these turrets that i got these are 3d printed turrets from a company called Hexi Studio. They are pretty nice. Uh, they're not actually the right scale. Uh, if you look at them, the, the, the turrets, or each weapon is bigger than a battle mech itself. Um, but I found that it's smaller, like if it was all to scale, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have popped, it wouldn't have, you wouldn't, wouldn't really necessarily know what it is just like from a distance so i didn't really care played with scale a lot uh doesn't matter all that much uh, you could also say that they're like capital weapons or whatever you want uh but yeah they're actually 28 millimeter scale and they uh are meant to go on tanks and so on uh, but I think that they look pretty damn cool. Uh, here's a door from the same company. And, uh, yeah, this is also 28 millimeter scale, really meant for like a person to go through, but I thought like a mech could go through there. It was a pretty simple paint job, just, you know, like green and then a lot of dirt and some chrome on top of that some rust, make it look all dirty as much as possible. Um, I really like them. And an atlas can't fit through it. A locust could, uh, for sure. Probably even some of the medium mechs, like a Shadowhawk or a Wolverine, could easily fit through that door. Uh, those are the, just the doors that go into the buildings, and they don't uh, open or anything, because there's nothing on the inside of the buildings. Uh, yeah, these are bunkers that I made from, like, physiotherapy foam rollers that you'd, like, put under your back. And I I just cut, I cut, like, one slice that was four centimeters, one slice that was two centimeters. Then the four centimeter slice, I cut the hole out of, you know, the the slot where you look out, just cut it in half, halfway down, and then cut that off, and then glued it back together, covered it in the same kind of uh, the, that grout filler stuff, put Mod Podge, weathered them up, and that was that. Also, you can see that really cool like radar dish tower that isn't painted yet, and in the background, you can see uh, another uh, turret on top of the building and there's a door with a turret just above it yeah now this this is something different this is my door mechanism i built this as well and uh you can see the door going back and forth and i'll just show you from the front uh, what that looks like open and close I played with that for so long. <laughs> Once I when I built that, I just sat there for like an hour, like open, close, open, close. It was so much fun. Uh, 
And I'll just show you quickly how that works. Uh, this is the mechanism I made from a little like toy robot thing that I took apart. So you move that back and forth and there's this wheel that just makes this wheel go back and forth. Um, that's all that does. And you can see on the wall, if I can get in the camera here, uh, that little cutout here, that's where the wheel, um, it rests on the wheel there and goes back and forth. And here's the real magic of the thing. This little slot here is made to hold a uh, marble that just fits in there. And then the only two points that are actually touching anything are the marble and where it sits on top of the wheel. So the marble can just roll back and forth and uh, doesn't go anywhere because it's in this handy little slot that is really I, I didn't build that slot that 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 was there from the beginning anyways so yeah you just put it on there and back and forth and back and forth and open close i actually made a mistake when i built this thing i won't talk about that though i i cut out yeah here there is the uh roof for the mech bay that i made and uh, I like that a lot so you can jump up on top of it or uh, go through it if you want to now what I am doing is something I should have done before I started even painting this thing uh, which is cut out a hole for this door so I'm just tracing out the shape of it 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 didn't really actually make that much of a difference the uh The stuff I put on is it was easy to enough to slice through and it sliced really cleanly so that was actually fine so here I'm making I'm just cutting through the layers of uh, like the tile grout stuff and the Mod Podge uh, just to get a nice clean line and then stick this knife and cut that's a handy little curved knife that's actually for cutting potatoes in a certain shape it's kind of a weird knife but it's really handy for things like this um yeah and i didn't care if it was like roughly cut on the inside or anything you won't be able to see any of that anyway so i managed to pop the door off eventually and i did this like five times for five different doors this is the only one i actually recorded clean it up a little bit and I realized in making the other doors, it was a very good idea to um, cut out a hole in the back. Uh, so measure where it was, make sure to measure from the right sides and get an idea where the hole is or where the building is, uh, where I wanna cut into it. So I'm not cutting into the street. I almost did here actually, uh, but it was fine. And the reason I, it was really handy to have a hole in the back is because if you push the door in a little too far uh, and you don't have any way to push it back, it's essentially impossible to get it back. And as you don't need to see the bottom of this thing, I didn't mind a few holes in the bottom. Here you can see my finger and and fit the door in sort of no i had to scrape away a few more things but it fit in there and i glued it in there uh after that uh i don't think yeah anyways on to something completely different this is uh my mech bay that's where little Mexico and that is like a little welding arm I made from Warhammer guns and that's just gonna like get glued up in the top of the map bay like that you know kind of welding your mechs and repairing them I kind of got the idea from Mech Warrior 5. Now this is like a little 
box I made to be able to make like 25 of these shapes. I think 24 actually in total. Uh, for all my four mech bays. And the boxes, it, it actually turned out really handy. Just, it was easy to make. I used like cereal box box and then draw the shape of the thing you want, the outside shape of it onto the box and then cut out like two centimeters around each edge. And then you just like cut some slits in it fold those sides up and you have a little shape and it really helps because you can um, just push the pieces like right up to the edge and you just put a little bit of glue on them and I use my trusty tweezers and you stick the piece in the box, push it where it needs to go and you get pretty much exactly the right shape uh, except for the one in the middle. That was a little more tricky. I kind of had to eye that. Uh, yeah, tweezer everything nicely in shape and then let it dry. There were some problems with it sticking a little bit to the box, but if you're careful with your glue, um, it's not that bad. And here's like a time lapse of me doing all of them in uh, <laughs> a super speed time lapse. Uh, this took quite a while and I made like, I made 24 of them in total. Uh, so this is a whole video of me actually making all 24 of them. Uh, it was a fun afternoon. It was nice and, uh, the sun was shining. You can see the sun shining in there. Yeah, I really like doing this kind of thing. Um, just sitting there repetitive glue the same thing over and over wait five minutes for it to dry well no you have got to wait a little more than five minutes uh, I used wood glue and uh, yeah that's what that is I probably didn't need to add that but there they are all of them I didn't make 24 there I think I made like 18 Anyway, so yeah, I painted them all in chrome. I could have done a, maybe a little more weathering and made them look cooler, but I didn't. I still think they're cool anyway. They could have been a little rusty maybe. And so yeah, I glued two of them together. Uh, and took two of them and put them in between these blocks and these salt and pepper shakers just to keep them really nice and, uh, you know, square. Uh, an easy way to keep them standing up square. And I had the cross pieces that I then cut, uh, used glued wood glue onto and tweezer them into place and when they were dry I glued on the bottom and a back piece too and that's what they look like with their little welding arms in place and I thought that they could look a little more technical so I decided to make like a little electric box using this foam so I cut out uh, these boxes, I actually cut out six of them for no reason. I thought I only needed four, but I thought I might make six and use them for something else, which I never ended up doing, but you never know. So I do what I always do, prime everything in black. Uh, and then, yeah, these are, and I thought they need some like buttons on the front. So I just took some uh, sprues and sliced up some sprues into little button shapes. And I painted a whole bunch of them blue and I painted a bunch of them red. And it was really fiddly using my trusty tweezers again. Was the blue ones done?
And a few red ones. Really not much to see. Easy to do. Using Tamiya paints. They're pretty good. That was really, that was really fiddly. But, yeah. And I had to make sure not to lose them. Anyways, so they got dry and took out some super glue. Using a stick <laughs> to kind of paint it on there and just taking a few of the little uh, buttons and putting them on and realizing that the blue doesn't really show up so well against the black, but whatever. It's a treat for anybody who wants to look really closely and find the blue buttons. And so yeah, just placing them on with the tweezers. I let them dry, did four of them. And then uh, just took a bit of chrome paint and dry brushed them. And just, I mean, I probably could have done a little better job, but I thought that they looked okay. And it's just a tiny little detail inside of a little mech bay, inside of a much bigger base. So, you know, you don't have to... Uh, really kill yourself over doing these things. But I thought they looked good. Especially once they got into the mech base. So, oh yeah, I lost one of the buttons there. Quite fiddly. But, just put another one on. Put it into place. And it's super glue, so it dried in no time. And then... I just super glued those into the corner of the mech bays. Just like that. Anyway almost done with that after that final touch uh oh here you can have a closer look yeah i thought that looked okay a little wonky but it's you never see it this then i took some wires and super glued those on to the side to make it look i don't know i don't know more technical this wire actually, in particular, didn't stay on, and I ended up ripping that one off and putting a bunch of other ones on. And I'll show you here. Uh, yeah, you can see there's a red, there's actually also a black wire right next to it. There's the little box. And that is going to get stuck, I'll show you, in there. Just glue it in with a bit of wood glue. But I'm not going to do that yet because now is time for the tape. Uh, I found a whole set of like construction industrial tapes uh, for, you know, they had like under construction. It just had this red and white stripe stuff. It had danger, no entry, and all kind, you know, yellow, black stripe tape and yellow, black tape with arrows on it. Uh, it's really, it's, it's really cool. Um, the tape itself, I, I gotta see, hold on. I'll see what, it, what it's called. It's, it's called like Ubix, Y-U-B-X. And they have a whole set of all these different construction tapes. And they're really good because they're papery and they don't actually stick all that well, which was good because if I stuck it down and I didn't like how it was stuck down, uh, it was really easy just to move the tape around. And since it was papery, I could just put a bunch of Mod Podge over top of it and it stuck beautifully and is still sticking today. And here I'm trying to do a little piece I, I, there's a gap there because it's an intersection and 
I didn't know how to do the intersection. I started to think about like, what are intersections in real life? Like, do the lines go? And, you know, I've been through like a hundred million intersections in my life. And I had to actually go and look at one. And no, the lines don't. They stop, obviously. If you think about it, they definitely stop. But anyways, so uh, the intersections have gaps. And this piece was really fiddly. But I finally got it. And just a bit of Mod Podge, and it stays there forever. Amazing stuff, Mod Podge. Can't get enough of it. And I'm going to do a bit more tape over here. This is going to be a different kind of tape. Uh, just trying to measure so I can get right in the middle as much as possible. And using a pencil uh, that I can't really see <laughs> on, on that gray dark gray road uh but i it, it helped a little bit uh just to make sure just to help me get it in the middle but honestly i think i could have eyed it and that's the tape and it's yellow black arrow because this is the mech bay and it is one way you have to go in one way and you have to exit the other and there is a no entry uh, sign on the roof of the mech bay on the side you can't come in and here's me trying to cut it with a knife because it was impossible to cut it with scissors in this little tiny uh, area so I had to I could have got some smaller scissors too maybe uh, but the knife actually worked fine Finishing off the tape for the mech bay area. This part was hard to cut. That was annoying. Just a little tiny area. I guess I could have just, yeah, taken it out and cut it with some scissors. It would have been easier. And the Mod Podge on top of that. I really, you really can't say enough about Mod Podge. Just sticks everything down. It dries completely clear. It's great. Now here is like a little chimney piece I wanted to make. Uh, you can see that is the chimney and it fits into the hole. I got those. Those are actually like I'll show you. Uh, they come off of a Warhammer vehicle, and this one still has its attached there. Um, but I have several of these. A friend donated them to me, and I just cut that stuff off and cut them out. And I thought they looked like cool chimneys. And so I built this little thing and start by trying to, you know, make it a little black around the edges. Uh, I thought they would be especially dirty around the chimneys. And so I just wanted to weather this thing up. And actually, it took a lot longer. It was more difficult to weather this thing than I expected. I think the problem was I was uh, worried about, like, making it too weathered uh so it wouldn't match the root the other stuff i had done but it was fine i there you can see i mixed up some yellow and black which is a really strange way of making uh green uh but it's a pretty nice dirty kind of army green and uh, i just put it on and you can see like it looks like i didn't do anything uh there so add a little more black, a little more, and it's still not really weathered enough, but I'll get back to that later. Now, just going to do what I always do, prime everything in black, take the chimneys, 
put on this black paint all over. Doodly do, painting up. You gotta make sure to get the extra goopy paint off if you want a good paint job. Dry off your brush and go and scoop up the extra scoopy, goopy parts. That's what I'm doing right there. And I still wasn't happy with the weathering on this thing, so continue. Now that's looking a little better. That matches the rest of the building a little more. But I guess not enough. <laughs> Came back and did even more. And believe it or not, I think I'm going to do even more after this. The rest of the building wasn't this difficult. I got it pretty much right the first time. It's just that I didn't do this at the same time, and I was worried about it not matching so well. Anyways, now get the trusty chrome out. And just going to do a quick chrome dry brushing over these chimney things just to make the pieces pop. Thinking back on it, I should have or could have made them like rusty as well, but I didn't for whatever reason. Uh, maybe I'll go back and put some rust on them later. Uh, but I think that they look pretty good. Just like that. And that's how I put them in. And uh, I still wasn't happy with how the weathering looked. Uh, so I got some black paint, smeared it all over, and then wiped it up with uh, tissue, which actually I found was, uh, I used that on the, on the main base too, on all the roofs, smeared all over, and then just kind of dab it off, leaving patchy black places. And since this was like, uh, chimney smokestack kind of thing. I thought it should be uh, extra, extra dirty. So, yeah. And that's what that looks like. Now, this is fun. I decided that these uh, turrets should be magnetized and uh, be interchangeable with other things on roofs so you can kind of change up the style of the base so i just measured where i wanted them to be cut out a little hole and that's some sandpaper i'm using just to like uh scratch up the 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 metal surface of the magnet a little bit uh because it's kind of um well, it's very smooth, and I was worried it wasn't going to hold the glue. So, I was using wood glue. It worked. It was fine. But uh, since then, I have used um, uh, hot glue to uh, connect magnets to things, and I find that the hot glue works better, and I'm just using some of the tile grout pillar stuff to hide them. I didn't really need to do this as the turret sits on top anyway. Anyway, you can see all the magnets that I put on, but I did go back and kind of like uh, paint them up and weather them so that they wouldn't be so visible. And this is how I attached. I didn't attach magnets to the bottom of the, uh, turrets or not turrets the bunkers uh i i they, i just used little tiny thin metal plates that were magnetic uh i found that they worked pretty well and i didn't need the magnetic pull to be like super strong or anything uh so yeah i put down some parchment paper 
so that I could glue those on in place and they would be in the right place for the magnets and the glue would not stick to the parchment paper. Put something on top and I left it for the night. And I did all of the bunkers like that. Um, and in that chimney piece too. So you can switch the chimney pieces with the bunkers. Now, this stuff, these are a bunch of uh, 3D printed mini things I got from the Lazy Forger. And I'll put a link in the description to the Lazy Forger. If you've never seen the Lazy Forger stuff from uh, his game, uh, what's it called? Full Spectrum Dominance. Uh, the, the minis are so unbelievably perfect and detailed. That's like pipes for the fuel tanks. And uh, you'll get to see all that. And I have so much of this stuff. You have no idea. I spent forever painting this stuff up. And uh, don't do what I'm doing here, which is painting the individual pieces black because the pipes fit together, but like the the fit is so tight that even a, lay a thin layer of paint uh, can make it a lot more difficult to get them together. It was fine. I was able to get everything painted up. Oh my goodness. It took me quite a while. Um, and yeah, there you see, that's not, that's not even all of it. That's just a portion. Now I'm taking the fuel tanks and just taking some white and dry brushing it over everything. And I did this with every single piece of pipe and every building as well. And you can see that's what it looks like when you do that. It's easy, it's fast, and since I had to do a million little tiny pieces, I wanted to do the quickest and dirtiest uh, thing possible. You can see the little round gas tank there. Uh, I'm doing a third fuel tank. I got two of the fuel tanks and the round ball gas tank uh, and then a whole lot of pipes and a few buildings that I actually never ended up using. I think that one that I'm painting there right now is one. Uh, it's all right. I can use it for a future project probably. Anyways, these, de these things and these are Battletech scale. So this is absolutely perfect Battletech scale. Six mil it says six to eight millimeters, which is exactly what uh, Battletech is and works perfectly. Uh, amazing little minis. You should go check that out for sure. That's a little radio antenna that actually ended up going next to the helipad. And the building I'm doing now is like a garage kind of thing, but also one of the buildings I never put in anywhere. But they're just loose. You could put them on the base wherever you want. I could do that if I wanted to for future games. So there is actually the all all painted up in yellow and rusty colors and I'm doing the other fuel tank now I just thought it needed a little more uh, white dry brushing really make the pieces pop otherwise it'll be too dark and you won't be able to see anything after that I painted up everything in between the little like metal bits on the outside all the in-between parts I painted blue trying as best I could to avoid the white kind of things in between just getting the tank itself and that was 
actually a lot of fun. I really like doing stuff like this. I mean, that's the hobby, right? Oh, just getting it all blue. This will actually be... This will take a while, because you got to go around, make sure you got all the bits, touch up any places that didn't get it, make sure you do it thoroughly. And clean off my brush. That's uh, pure alcohol in that little thing that I'm dipping my paintbrush in. Just cleans the brushes really, really well. Now, mixing up some rust color. And the way I do that is I use uh, the Army Painter, uh, what is it called? Fire Giant Orange. And just the tiniest little speck of... Uh, Citadel Talisar Blue, which is actually what the blue on the, um, on that fuel tank is. And that little tiny bit of blue in the orange just kind of browns it a tiny little bit. And you get a nice rust color. And I'm just going over all of the bits that I didn't paint blue that were still white. All the, everything that I thought, you know, like all the extra metallic detail on the outside. And I did make enough of the rust, so that's the fire giant orange, and that's the, I think, yeah, talisar blue or something like that. Yeah, just mix a little bit more up and cover everything in rust, because this is an old, rusty, but still functional uh that's very important <laughs> that it is still functional uh fuel tank and just getting every little bit make sure i have every little spot and if some of the rust got onto the blue that's really not a big deal you know that would be rusty as well, and that's what that looks like. And then just get out the trusty chrome and dry off that brush really well. And just do a really quick dry brush over the whole thing. Try not to cover all of the rust. We still want the rust coming through in most spots. And that's what it looks like. And I did all of the fuel tanks and all of the pipes like that. I thought it was pretty good. So, oh, yes. These little tiny things. Uh, so I just went online, got... Um, Warning signs, warning, you know, shields, whatever you call them. I don't know what you call them. Uh, and just printed them off. I, I printed it in minuscule beside, I didn't use the minuscule tiny ones. I thought I might use those for something, but they're too small to see anything on. So I'm just cutting out the one I want. And this is actually the exact same way I did the helipad. Just found some picture of a helipad online, took it into GIMP, kind of resized it to how big I wanted it, printed it off, and just modge podge it in place. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with this one. These things are really tiny, though, and I lost more than one when I turned my back for just a moment. So you just got to cut it out as best as you can, cutting off all the white, leaving only a little teeny tiny sign. These are barely visible, 
but you know, little tiny details that I liked. All of the uh, pipes and so on, I didn't record gluing them in because that was a hassle. <laughs> I used um, hot glue and you got to be quick with hot glue and there's no time to worry about a camera and all that stuff. So I just hot glued the things and smashed them into place. And yeah. Now where I want to stick my little warning sign just above the other two on that wall there. You come in with a paintbrush and just put some Mod Pod where you want to put it. Very easy. And the hardest part is not losing the little teeny tiny sign. And just get it into place and you can't really see it now, but the Mod Podge dries completely clear. And it will look just like the other two below it. And that's how I did it. Did like a whole bunch of these little tiny warning signs all over the place. And <clears throat> I put more tape on either side of the door. Warning tape, as you can see. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's mostly everything that I did on this stuff thing. I know I didn't record everything, but... I hope you get the general idea of how I did this. Uh, maybe get some inspiration for yourself to go out and find a piece of, you know, like some random packing insert and see what you see and turn it into a piece of terrain or whatever. I think uh, my next my next project will probably be, hmm, I don't know. I saw a nice styrofoam egg online, a really big one that could turn into something nice. Anyways, I won't talk about what I might do in the future. Uh, but yeah, uh, this was really a lot of fun. I did a lot of it with my kids and the result is great. I actually have yet to play on it and I'm really looking forward to that. I've got a whole mission set up and Hopefully I'll record that and show you when that's out, but who knows. And if you are uh, like expecting a lot of more crafting videos, there will be more in the future someday. But uh, just keep in mind, this, this thing took me four and a half months to uh, build. <coughs> so... If you're happy waiting that kind of time frame, you can, yeah, can consider me a bit of a crafting channel now. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, maybe give me a like, subscribe, leave a comment. I always appreciate everything and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.